Can you imagine deriving all the possible arrangements of the letters in the word incomprehensible? I wouldn't bother. There's over 870 billion. Stay tuned to figure out how to prove if I'm right. In the last lesson, we talked about all the ways that you could create sequences or subsets from larger sets, from alphabets. We talked about things like uh, duplicates allowed or no duplicates allowed, uh, order matters or any order. And in fact, we came up with a formula for figuring out how to calculate the total number of possible sequences when order matters and duplicates are allowed. It was exponentiation or if we were just talking about maybe license plates where we had uh, the, the Latin alphabet for one character and numbers for another character and so forth, we actually use the multiplication principle of counting. In this lesson, what we're going to talk about is something called permutations. And permutations is when order matters, but no duplicates. All right. Sometimes said no repetition, right? So let's go ahead and get started to figure out how we can come up with a formula for order matters but no duplicates. And we're going to start, like we did last time, with an example. How about looking at the total number of possible orders for these three letters in the word bit? Let's see, we can have bit, right? Um, we can have swap the I and the T, get BTI. And how about starting with I and get IBT? and then ITB, and then starting with T and get BI, and then TIB, all right? See any others? No, I don't. And in fact, we can use the multiplication, pr the multiplication principle in order to come up with this formula. And the way it works is this. I've got three positions. Now, the first position, remember, no duplicates allowed. The first position has three to choose from, B, I, or T. And in fact, these two right here, I picked B first. These two right here, I picked I first. These two right here, I picked T first. So that would be three. Now, the multiplication principle then says multiply that times the number of options for the second decision. In the second decision, we had two letters left. So I have two options. So this becomes three times two. And then the last bit I have, well, the last bit, the last character, I have one character to pick from. So it becomes one. And so this three times two times one equals six total of six options. Now, this particular formula is used so much in mathematics, it's actually given a name. It's an operation that has a name. It's called a factorial, and it is represented with the exclamation point. And so three factorial is three times two times one. It's all the integers from that, from this integer right here, all the integers down. Now, that, this makes sense for one factorial, two factorial, three factorial. One factorial is just one, right? It's one time, one times, that's it, right? Uh, two factorial is two times one, three factorial is three times two times one, and so forth. There is one that has a special definition, and that is zero factorial, and zero factorial is always equal to one. We'll show why that's important in a minute. Now, what if I had told you I want to create all the sequences of two, of length two, from the letters B, I, and then T. Well, we would come up with B, I, right? How about B, T, I, B, I, T, T, B, T, I. Now, see if you can come up with any other combinations. No, you can't. That's it. And what's interesting about this is that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, the same number if I had three letters, if I used all three letters, right? The reason is, is because once you pick two letters, then I've already, I've already designated what the one character is that would be left over. In this case, it's the one character that's left over. In this case, where I'm picking three characters, it's the one character that will always be the last one or that will be the last one in the sequence. Now, this at this point, I want to define a couple of letters for you. N, first of all, is going to be what we have. It's going to be the, uh, the cardinality of the set we're drawing from. 
In other words, in the case of our little example right here, we're looking at a cardinality of three. We have the three letters, the B, the I, and the T. The other uh, letter that we're going to use is R, and this is the length of the sequence. And so in this case, we've got a length of, well, in this first one, we had a length of three. In the second one, we had a length of two. So R equals three here, R equals two here. Now let's talk a little bit about the nomenclature that you're going to see with this. This, by the way, we've talked about before, is permutations. All right, And the nomenclature we use, there's two of them actually. Sometimes you'll see P within parentheses N comma R. Other times you'll see N P R. And in fact, if you look at your calculator, a lot of calculators have this as an option. One of the buttons on the calculator actually may be labeled NPR to show you that it has the, the functionality, the capability of, ca of calculating the permutations based on the size of the set we're pulling from and the number of elements in our sequence. Now let's use our newfound formula to figure out the number of ways we can arrange the letters in the word byte, B-Y-T-E, computer byte, as opposed to uh, B-I-T-E, right? Well, first of all, we need to select the first character, right? And, and what I'm going to say is N is equal to 4, right? And R is also equal to 4. So what we're looking at is 4P4. Now, what is 4P4? Well, remember, we have four options for the first character, three options for the second character, two options for the third character, and then the last character is already picked for us. So this becomes four times three times two times one, which is equal to that four factorial, right? We figure out what four factorial is. Two times three is six times four. That's equal to 24. So it turns out that there are 24 arrangements of the word byte, all right? And in fact, we could, we could in fact show there's the list of all the possible combinations of the word letters in the word byte. But what if I only wanted to draw two letters from those characters? Well, in that case, we're going to have to come up with a slightly different formula. For example, if I were to go ahead and do the 4P4, right, then I'd have B-Y-T-E, B-Y-E-T. Those are two possible combinations that I could have. And the reason why I'm listing this is because these two possible combinations have B and Y as the first two letters. And so a two letter sequence might be BY. Another two letter sequence might be YB. But once I selected Y and B, then T and E, they have two ways that they could be written. You know, we could have YB. T E and Y B E T. All right. So there are two combinations. So this number 24 means that I've got two different selections that I can have that correspond to the first two letters being B Y. And then I have two more combinations which uh, correspond to Y and B being the first two letters. So this 24 has to be reduced somewhat. It's not like when we just left one letter off. If we leave two letters off, there's actually two combinations for each one of those. So what we are going to do in order to figure out this case where N equals four, but R equals two, the formula is a little bit different. And the way the formula works is, first of all, we have the permutations at the top. So we'll have 4P4. So this is the total number of combinations. That's this 24, right? But we are going to divide it by two in order to get rid of the duplicates for those last two letters. And in fact, in a more formal way to write this, this is actually going to be equal to 4P4 divided by 2 times 1. This guy is actually 4P4 and then 2 factorial. Why did I make this 2 factorial? Well, because it turns out that if I leave two letters off, there are 2 factorial ways that those can be arranged. And so the answer, whenever n is equal to 4 and r is equal to 2, is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 
2 times 1. And notice these guys cancel out, and what you get is 4 times 3, and that's equal to 12, which gives us the list of all the possible ways that we can pull just two letters from byte. Now it turns out that there's a formal way for us to write this expression. So we showed that an R equal to N or an R equal to N minus one, in both of those cases, the number of combinations is just simply uh, NPR equal to N factorial, right? Now, the problem is, is when R is less than N minus one, and that's the case that we had. And then the expression becomes N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. So we've got the factorial of the set size divided by the factorial of the number of characters that are left over after pulling out R. Now we can show that this formula actually works for both of these guys. For example, when R is equal to N, then we've got N factorial divided by N minus R, which is n minus n factorial, that's equal to n factorial divided by zero factorial. And we said before that zero factorial is just equal to one. So that's n factorial divided by one, which is equal to n factorial. So when r is equal to n, when we are choosing n from n, then we just have n factorial. So what happens when r is equal to n minus one? Well, in that case, we've got n factorial divided by n minus, n minus r, well r is equal to n minus 1 factorial. Well this is equal to n factorial over n minus n plus 1 factorial. That's just equal to n factorial over 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1 and once again we have that is equal to n factorial. Now, if we had a set size of n and we were pulling r from it, and we had a set of distinct elements, for example, bit and byte, those were distinct elements. But what if I'm pulling from a string like giga? What if I wanted to count, create four character strings that are just simply swapping around these characters? Well, it turns out, let's just take one of them, giga, all right? Giga is the same as giga depending on whether I pull the first G first and the second G next, or I'm swapping those Gs around. That's the same sequence, right? So we can't count those together. We actually, you know, we actually are gonna need to remove that. So we are still going to do a 4P4, but in this case, we are not going to count when the sequence looks the same because I can swap the G and the G. So here is a list of all the possible ways we can sort giga. If I sort them in alphabetical order, notice that I get pairs. And each one of these pairs is defined by the fact that there are two ways to sort those matching Gs. So what I need to do is take out each one of those pairs, right? So I basically need to divide by two, and it turns out that what I'm actually doing is dividing by two factorial. So let's assume that in the set that we're drawing from, the alphabet that we're drawing from, so in the set we're drawing from, an element is duplicated d times to try and give you an idea or let you try to match this up to what I'm talking about here in giga the element g is duplicated twice all right then what happens is is that I am going to do the npr divided by d factorial why? because those duplicate elements can be sorted d factorial ways and each way that you sort those duplicated elements is going to be the same. So you can't, you know, for example, G and G is the same as G and G. So I need to divide out. I need to pull those out. Now, if I have, say, three elements that are duplicated, 
then it's NPR divided by, and we'll just simply say D1 factorial D times D2 factorial times D3 factorial. So I am going to divide the NPR by the product of all three factorials, all right? So let's apply this to creating strings of length four out of giga. The first of all, r equals n, so basically we're going to have n factorial divided by the number of duplicates that we have. So in this case, we've got four factorial divided by two factorial to compensate for those two g's. Four factorial, four times three is 12, times two is 24, so you have 24 divided by two, and that's equal to 12, so, that there, are, so there are 12 patterns that we can create like that. Okay, so how many ways can we sort five letters? Well, if it's five distinct letters, it's just five factorial, right? Well, five factorial is, is 120, right? But what about in the letters in the word array? In this case, I have two duplicates. I have two A's and I have two R's, which means that we've got five factorial divided by two factorial for the A's arrangement and two factorial for the R's, the sorting of the R's. And this becomes 120 divided by four, which is equal to 30. And as you can see, we've got 30 different, well, that's a lot, isn't it? 30 different ways that we can arrange array. Let's do one more of those. What about sorting the letters in the word banana? All right, now in this case, I've got one B, I've got three A's, and I've got two N's. So if I wanna sort them, and I've got six letters total, so it's six factorial, right? Well, six factorial, I could actually have the one factorial to show the number of ways I can sort B. Then I've got A, there are three ways to sort that. And then I've got N, there are two ways to sort that. And so this becomes 720, which is six factorial, divided by three times two times two, all right? Which is 720 divided by, what is that, 12? And 720 divided by 12 is 60, and that will give you the total number of ways that I can arrange the letters in banana. So where does that bring us? Well, we still have the number of combinations. And remember, the number of combinations is whenever you don't have any order. There's no order. And when you don't have any order, that's more like pulling a subset from a set. We'll come up with the expression for that in the next lesson.